Hey guys, how are we going? Okay, let me just turn the mic up. Well, this is a bit of an unusual live. I don't normally come live um, on a Thursday, although I do try and put a video of some kind out on a Thursday, it, providing I've got the time. But I was going to do some product research today and I just kind of thought, well, may as well come on here and do it live with you guys so that if anybody's got any questions, you're welcome to come in here and ask away and just join me for join me for some research like a bit of a casual a casual product research so um if you're replaying this live or you're in the chat and you don't know me i'll just introduce myself my name is mel i am an aussie mum of four kids and i resell on ebay full-time and i pretty much sell cheap items um bread and butter items and make a full-time living selling these items so Today, yeah, like I said, I just wanted to come in here. I think it's really important that every couple of months, if you're an eBay seller, you do a little bit of research on what's what's selling. Because I think as sellers, what happens is we go into the charity shops and we find things that we're interested in buying. And so we comp those particular items while we're in the store. And now when I say comp, what I mean is we are checking the completed sales. So we're looking up on our iPhones while we're in the charity shop, what sold and how much it sold for. So I think it's easy to it's easy to do that. But I think as sellers, what we need to do is every couple of months we need to come and spend an hour or two at our computer and actually do some proper researching of just all the different types of things that we sell go through the solds, just looking at the items that are selling, how much they're selling for, what brands are selling, what colours are seem to be popular at the moment, and, and just look and analyse those types of things because I think we forget to do that and we should be doing it every couple of months because what once sold for us as like a hot item might not be selling hot now. Um, things change and, you know, styles change, especially with clothes, styles change and seasons change and we just need to stay on top of what's actually selling currently because, you know, what sold for us last summer might not sell for us this summer. And where I am, I'm coming into summer now and I know it sold hot for me last year but whether or not it's going to sell hot for me this year, you know, who knows? So what I'm going to do is start to go in there and I'm just going to have a look around, look at all these items that are selling and just kind of try to analyze it in my head so that I know what to look out for when I am going into the charity shops looking for items. So if there's anything that you guys want me to look up while I'm here live, make sure you put it into the chat. Um, put an itchy nose. Make sure you put it into the chat. So um, if there's a brand or something specific that you want me to look up and I can show you while I'm doing it, throw it in the chat and I will look it up. So let me just see who is here because um, I wasn't sure if anyone was going to come because it was like a a, a very quick um, random decision to do it. I was meant to be going out to lunch today with a friend. That didn't happen. So I just figured I would jump on here and do this live. Hi Tanya, hi Leanne. I always say this wrong. Can someone tell me how to say it? Can you can you spell it out? Is it Leanne, Leanne, Leanne? I, I don't know. Um, Tanya, hey Duncan, Beck King's here, no Coke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've got water, I've got a water. I'm trying to get off the coke. <laughs> so I have to I have to start by minimalizing it. I have to minimalize it. <laughs> I'm cleaning people's houses. Oh, it's the worst job cleaning. Hey Amran. Um, hey Ian. Um, hi Howard from Yorkshire. Uh, where are hi Aid, how you going? Hey Matt's what I am. And um my nose is so itchy today, I don't know what's going on. Okay. Let's have a look at this. I am going to pull up a share screen so I can go into my eBay page. Now, is this working? Okay, so I am primarily a pretty basic seller. I sell clothes, shoes, books, CDs, um, DVDs. Like I am pretty basic seller. I don't really sell anything too fancy I don't sell a lot of electronics because I don't know the first thing about them. And, um, you know, 
I, I tend to steer clear of those things that I don't know as much about. I know I can learn it, but for me, it's just quicker to, quicker to do what I know, especially since I'm a volume store. I'm, in, I'm trying to do things as quickly as possible. So today I thought I would start researching, um, you know, different things that are coming up and what's been selling. So obviously what I want to do is I want to come down to the sold items and click on the solds. Now, in my category here, I've just got women's tops. So that's pretty general. But sometimes when you're doing research like this, it's actually good to just look at, at things as a general because when you go to the charity shop and you are looking up something specific, so say, for instance, this jumper. If I found this jumper in the charity shop, I'm going to look up um, Green Machine, Canberra Raiders, um, Grey blue sweater or whatever it is and I'm going to try and find a, 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 comp, a completed sale for that while I'm in the charity shop however if I'm just wanting to look up as a general like what is selling in terms of women's tops women's dresses men's shorts men's jeans what are the most popular things and so I, I want to analyze this so that I can try and see any trends like if I'm looking at these things, what what is the trend of what's selling? Like whether or not is that a style? Is it a particular size? Is it a brand that's selling really well? So I want to look at it all a little bit more generalized so I can try and work this out because I, I want to analyze this. I want to analyze what's selling and how I can sell it and what I can buy to make this, um, you know, profitable for me. So I might do a little bit of specific brand research after this, but right at the moment, I just want to look up women's tops. So what I'm going to do is I've got the condition set here as used first, and I don't have the price. Price and postage. I want the condition. Do I want this set as the highest or the lowest? I mean, I want to be able to see both what's selling, but I also want to be able to see what's selling for a, you know, a higher amount, obviously. So let's just have a look at the price and the postage as the highest first. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Clearly, I'm not going to be finding anything like that in my um, <laughs> charity shop. Spell designs, vintage, rare, tiger, kimono. Wow. Um, this person clearly had three of them as well for sale and has made a nice $10,000 looking there <laughs> off her three um, kimonos. Wow. Okay. So, okay. Looking at this, this is, I mean, this is pretty cool to look at when you look at these rare things that are going for like absolutely exuberant prices. But in all honesty, that's not going to help me. I mean, the chances of me finding anything like this are absolutely slim to none. So I'm going to actually change this search. I don't want to see the highest to lowest. Um, you know, that's absolutely ridiculous. So let's have a look here. I'm going to click over $20 because <laughs> that's probably more like the bread and butter that I find than any of these super designer stuff. Okay, so let's have a look what's selling here. Um, Taylor, New Zealand designer top, forever new. So we've got 20s, 50s. Um, okay, this brand here, Virtuel, that's a good brand to sell. And this is a plus size top. So um, $55, that's a, that's a great price for a pre-owned top. And Virtuel, it's definitely a brand to look out for. So if you see it. Now, autograph here. That's another um, plus size brand. So Autograph has their own store and, you know, they they, they focus on plus size. So it'd be probably size 16 and above because that's classified as plus. So that's pretty good as well. They've got $31 for a, for a basic top, um, $9.50 postage. I'd be pretty happy with that, like $40 odd. Looking at it, pretty just standard florally looking patterned paisley top this one as well it looks like the same seller because it's got the same backdrop here possibly um this possibly could have even been bought by the same buyer really size 18 size 20 um 23 plus postage it's just a regular target brand you can see like it's not really done fan it hasn't even been ironed really um pretty good pretty good blouse 
Okay, Hemant he he meant and then Dita. Now, I haven't actually heard of that brand, but $50, $50 plus post is pretty darn good. <laughs> so because I haven't heard of that brand, um, it's probably not a brand that I'm going to find very often. So, um, you know, I'm not as interested in that brand, even though that's a great price and they've sold that for a great price. I'm not actually as interested in that because as I'm flicking those um it racks really, really fast in my charity shop. It's probably not a brand that I'm seeing all the time because, quite frankly, I've never heard of it. <laughs> okay, Sarah Popover Blouse. Now, Sarah, what is Sarah from um, just like Best and Less or Big W or something? It's not an expensive brand. It is a plus size again, 24 plus post. Tommy Hilfiger, well, Tommy Hilfiger always does pretty good. Um, you know, it's got the brand name. That's a long sleeve shirt. It's a, It's a... What is that size? Pink L S slash S. I don't. Oh no, size eight. Long sleeve. Sorry, I was thinking that was just trying to say it was a large. Um, a crop top here. Veronica Main, one of my favourite brands. It always does well. Veronica Main. Um, again, thirty dollars plus eight ninety five. El Sanders Joseph. Okay, Witchery, another one of my favourite brands. Quite easy to find in your stores. Looking at that, pretty. Pretty, um, it is silk, so it's a good brand, size eight. Um, I find these witchery brands and stuff, they don't really go into the plus size. So they're, they're more of the, you know, the more smaller sizes, eight, 10, 12. Country Road here, Scanland, Taking Shape. Now, TS is called Taking Shape. Again, it is a plus size brand, $29.95. So now looking at all these kind of things, um, now this is pretty interesting here, guys. This is Cross um, Crossroads. Now Crossroads is a very inexpensive brand. Um, not inexpensive because probably if you go into the store, it's still it's still reasonably like it's, I wouldn't say it's cheap cheap like Kmart, but you know it's not a high quality brand, and they're still getting twenty five dollars for that top. So a top like this, you would find that easily on the um, two dollar rack at the Salvos. So, um, you know, like $24.95 and you've paid $2, I think that's that's pretty good bread and butter to me. Like that's that's decent. You you pay $2. If you're with the Australia Post, my post, like I am, I think I pay $7.20 for a um, small satchel. So that would take that to say $9, um, $2 plus $7 post is like $9. $24, you're looking at about um, $4 in fees if you work on a 15%. So, you know, this person's making a pretty easy $10 off, um, you know, a pretty basic looking top. Virtual again, plus size. Portman's, um, Kukai. Kukai is another expensive brand, always does well. Um, Seed, Country Road, these are all great brands and they're all quite easy, even though they're like more expensive mall brands like Country Road Seed, um, Witchery, they are on the more expensive side of the, the shopping mall brands. They're still readily available in your shops. And you can see they're pulling in those prices around that $30 to $40, which is really good if you can buy those items for, you know, $2, $3, you know, even $5. Um, Sportscraft, another great one. Um, Portman's now Portman's is just fairly regular brand, um, more brand 25 plus 920 postage. Again, you would probably pick that top up anywhere between two and five dollars, so you know, not not bad. Just Jeans now, Just Jeans isn't an expensive brand either, it's just a regular more brand. You can see that's a fairly basic shirt, it's just a blouse, checkered blouse. Nothing fancy about it, and it's selling. Oh, look, it is linen. Linen always sells well, um, so definitely look out for linen when you are looking for clothes. So $28 plus nine fifty fifty postage just for a regular Just Jeans, pretty good. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a Camilla top, $133, nice. Um, Camilla is a bit of a, um, you know, it's not, it's not a bread and butter brand. It's, you know, you. it's one of those brands that's nice to find, but it doesn't come across all the, t all the time. City Chick, another great plus size brand that always sells for good money. Um, check this one out, $50 plus 
ten dollars postage. Now, this top originally retailed for seventy nine ninety five, and this person has pretty much sold this for fifty nine ninety five. So, that's a really good price on a second hand item. Um, Spell beautiful brand, very expensive, and not really bread and butter. Sportscraft R M Williams here. These are these are good prices that are coming from you know. De good brands. Katmandu, great brand. Um, now, looking at all these things, I'm not nothing particular is jumping out at me in terms of um, pattern or style This on this top page here. They're all like a fairly random mix. If you look at them, most of them seem to be patterns. There's not as many solid colours here. There's the solid red. This is just a, a linen plain T-shirt and a um, a, a plain t-shirt here but most of these if you look um are actually patterned so maybe that's a little bit of a a little bit of a tip to look at maybe that's showing that pattern tops are selling really well at the moment and we need to be exploring more patterns and florals and paisleys and um yeah that's quite interesting um hmm. Okay, so that's women's tops. I'm, I'm not going to go too far into women's tops there, but you can see that if, if these are the type of things that you sell on a regular basis, it's really good to come in here and just sit back and have a look and analyse these things, what you're selling, what the colours are, what the patterns are, blah, blah, blah. Now, let me just see. Um, listening while playing a pool tournament. That is so cool. Hope you're feeling better, DBG. I know you were sick. I hope you are feeling good. Um, let me see. If there's any questions, please put question because otherwise I'm probably going to probably gonna miss it because I am looking at this screen <laughs> while I'm working. Okay, now let's have a look at something like men's. So I'm going to look up men's shorts. It's men's shorts. I absolutely love the ceiling. Um, I'm a big fan of selling men's shorts. In fact, I'm actually a big fan of selling men's clothes in general. Men's clothes don't change as much as women's clothes in terms of being as seasonal, um, styles. When you think about a men's clothes, it's very much like shorts, jeans, shirts, polo shirts, T-shirts, um, trousers pants slacks whatever you want to call them there's not a huge variety whereas women we have skirts and dresses and different styles and crop tops and tunics and blazers and um there's just so much more in women's wear and and you'll see that when you go to your charity shops you know the men's wear have only a few racks and the women's wear takes up half the store so um the thing about men's wear is i just find that it, it like it doesn't a pair of shorts is a pair of shorts sometimes it goes between some some seasons they might be a bit shorter than others or a little bit baggier but in general they don't change they don't change that much so um let's just have a look here what's selling so I spoke about board shorts in one of my other um, streams like a few weeks ago. Board shorts are a big seller for me. They always sell well. They're easy to pick up. Um, I find that I can get board shorts for anywhere between 2 and $5. I don't really like to pay more than $5 because generally I find that my board shorts, and this is about right, I normally will list my board shorts for about $25 plus post. Um, and then I might take an offer on them to go a bit lower. Um, but you don't really want to be spending more than $5 on them. But you can pick them up pretty easily. And I find this with any types of men's shorts, not just board shorts. You can print them up um, like these kind of beige material shorts, cargo shorts, um, men's workwear shorts, denim shorts like this. You find that a lot of them you can pick up between that 2 and $5 mark. And, yes, some of them will mark, be marked up higher um, and, you know, you just have to decide whether or not there's enough money in it for you profit-wise to pay more. But personally, on a pair of shorts, I don't like to pay more than $5, but I do try and stick down to more around that $2 mark. I definitely prefer to buy um, items around the $2 mark. 
so let's just have a look here again we're coming into summer here in australia so again you can see there's quite a few pairs of board shorts here um hurley volcom quicksilver billabong um they're all good brands that sell well um vintage denim shorts okay these are selling these are coming from uk here um Dicky shorts, this was a bundle. See, that's quite a good idea, guys. They had four pairs of shorts, all, all the same size, all the same brand and different colour. Probably come from um, either this person is a reseller. I'm not going to click in to see. They're either, they're either a reseller and somebody has donated all those at the same time. But these have probably originally come from, you know, the same person and um, all the same size. They've just liked that style. And that's a good, that's a good price to get as a bundle. Industry, that's another good brand. Patagonia. Now, hemp. Just looking at these, hemp sells well. Um, it's not something you find all the time or easily. I wouldn't say it's a bread and butter item, but hemp, you will come across it. I quite um, have found quite a lot of hemp shirts, and they always sell. They always sell fast for me. So, hemp is definitely a material to look out for, just like linen and silk. Um, hemp is something you can see there that they've taken a They've taken an offer, but they've still probably got a decent price for those shorts. Patagonia is another good brand. Now, this is pretty interesting because this is just Mambo. And Mambo is quite often now just found in Big W, you know, not an expensive brand. So somebody here, $33.95, um, 25 plus post. 45 plus post now these are vintage mambos so that's that's why they've bought more money vintage mambo is always going to bring some good money the mambo that's more recent in big w doesn't bring as much money but you know these don't really look um okay so this is a limited edition so that's why they've bought money these ones here they don't seem to say there's anything particular about them they could be fairly recent from big w and they're still bringing good money rm williams board shorts okay thirty dollars um denim shorts here floral shorts country road now country country road shorts you know they always do good for men's and the country road shorts are normally a little bit of a different style they're normally a little bit more um preppy i guess is the word and they're a little bit more shorter and sometimes a bit tighter um and they're often there, I often find that country road shorts are either striped or floral or they've kind of got that um, nautical look to them. And, yeah, that's a good price, $35. So you can see here by looking at shorts, these shorts, a lot of them, $25 to $30. Nike shorts, rusty shorts. So a lot of these shorts are bought uh, surf shop brands, denim, like uh, rusty Rusty, Quicksilver, Billabong, um, you know, there's some sports shorts in here like Adidas and Nike. What else have we got here? Nordica, that's also, that's a good brand. Again, that nautical look always is popular and it's that's a similar style to those country road ones. They're more of that slim fit short. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is pretty good. You can see if I scroll back up the top here, there's 24,781 results for men's shorts that have sold. So that is, that's a good indicator that that's a hot seller and that's a bread and butter not, that's a bread and butter item. So, um, you know, really take a look for your men's shorts. I find the bigger sizes sell well, 34, 36, and even the bigger, bigger sizes in the men's. They sell quite well. And if I'm just looking roughly here, now this is a 28. I don't find 28 sells as easily. It still sells, but not as easily as like a 34 or 36. Um, 36 here. These two are 31. Um, 36, 34, 34, 32, 32, 32. 32 is a fairly standard size as well. Um so, yeah, you can see that there's not, again, with board shorts, there's nothing really standing out there particular. There, there's a real mix there of stripes, bright patterns, fluoros for summer, florals, nautical, um, you know, denim. I mean, denim shorts are always going to go well. 
Um, this one hasn't got very much. Uh, 32 of the bundle of four pairs of shorts, right? And you can see they've got their 25 plus 12, so $37, which is okay. I think if that person had had a better photo, then that they they probably would have got more money for that. I think their photo has let them down on the amount of money that they've been able to obtain for that sale. Um, especially when you can see that so many of these shorts are selling for the $25 to $30 mark. So there you go, guys. Um, men's shorts, um, $39.95, car keys, Adidas. Jet Pilot is another brand that I find sells very well. It's a water skiing, you know, type brand. <laughs> this one's taken them on the clothes rack. <laughs> that makes me laugh. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, I think that's a good, good price. So these are some basketball shorts. They've got a great price. Mitchell and Ness, it's a good brand. Not something that you're going to find every day, but but most of these other brands, these denim shorts and these Billabong and these Industry and Quicksilver and Dickies and denim and um, Wrangler as well, you find heaps of Wrangler. Johnny Big, I find, does really quite well for me as well. And Johnny Big also does well in um, tops for me, shirts, um, men's polo shirts. Um, it's just, it, you know, it's obviously for plus size men. And um, yeah, it, it's made by, from memory, I think Johnny Big is made from Tarakash, but it's kind of like their plus size version of it. But yeah, size 40, but it, it's, a, it's a good seller, the Johnny Big. Um, so, yeah, there you go, men's shorts. I would say they are selling hot at the moment. They seem to be a great average there of between $25 and even $40. But, you know, most of them looking there, if you're working on $25 to $30, that is a good bread and butter item. I'm pretty, you, you, I'm pretty confident that you will find shorts for between $2 and $5 on your racks and, you know, you will be able to sell them there for that, around that $30 mark. Um. Johnny Big, easy pass at the thrift stores. Do you pass on Johnny Big? I, I will snap Johnny Big up if it's up for the right price. You, yeah, you'll be surprised at how well the plus size men's stuff goes for, even plus size jeans and stuff. Anything plus size, plus size women, um, it's it's awesome. 34, 36 is big. Um, 36, I wouldn't say is is too too big i would say 36 is fairly average but i going up i think over 36 you probably classify that as getting towards more of a plus size for a man let me know if i'm wrong <laughs> any of the plus size men out there um hey nick so just because i'm talking about plus size let's look at plus size because i love selling plus size and how about we just look at johnny big because we were just talking about him and i don't know if um who was it here the sift um drifter thifters i don't know if you were saying you pass it pass it up like you don't buy it let's let's have a look johnny big um let's just do a search Okay, Johnny Big, let's men's clothing. Let's have a look here for the Johnny Big. Okay, shorts, 22 plus post, 32 plus post, jeans, 35 plus post, men's jeans again, 28 plus post, two pairs of pants here, $70, um, slim leg trousers, 26 plus post. So I can see some pretty good prices here for Johnny Big and Johnny Big you you like you can definitely find that between the two and five dollars you'll find that nearly every time you go into a charity shop that is a bread and butter item um you know and you, these these plus sizes they sell really really well okay this is a blazer it's sold for 79 plus post now you know blazers are one of those items that I find I skip over very often into the charity shop i leave them to last i only sometimes look at them but i know people who do really well from selling like blazers and suits especially if this is one of uh 
especially if this is like a, a, a sports jacket, do you know what I mean? Like a blazer that looks like you would wear it with jeans um, rather than pants because it's hard to find the matching sometimes suits. But if you can find a blazer that looks like it would go really nice with a pair of jeans, um, you can often pick them up for like $10. So if you're selling that for like 79 plus posts, that'd be a pretty good buy. But yeah, as you can see here, you know, the jeans seem to be selling for around that 25 to 30 mark with post. Um, the shorts, again, they're selling for that 25 to 30 mark, like I said. Shirts here selling for 30 plus post. Um, you know, this is pretty good. Again, this guy has sold two pairs of pants at size 42, um, $30 plus 12 post. Now, if these are Johnny Big, I, th I actually think, again, the thing that's let this guy down here on his sale will be his, one, his photo, and two, his title. The title has not enough information in it. So I think he probably could have got more for that because most of these are selling for that price for one. So... Johnny Big shirt here. I mean, <laughs> look at his, <laughs> look at his title. Nice one, nice one. Um, some of these things, some, some. It does make me laugh sometimes when I do this research and I, I do look at some people's <laughs> photos and titles and I think, what the hell? How did that even sell with something like that? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, the the aim of this is to show you guys, like, do some research if you are. If you are skipping past Johnny Big, like don't don't <laughs> don't skip past it. It's 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 a it's a good brand to sell. Um, now, let's have a look at um, plus size for women. So women's plus size. I like selling women's plus size. Um, it always sells well for me. Um, I don't want to see these new spammy looking china things let's use to first why is that coming up pre-owned let's scroll past some of this what did i search women's plus size okay women's plus size top there's some random stuff coming here which makes it hard Oh, I'm in men's clothing. That's why. <laughs> That's why it's coming up as random. Okay, women's plus size tops. Let's have a look here. Taking shape, virtual. Straight, straight away, taking shape, virtual and city chic, the top four that are showing here. All great brands to pick up, all brands that you will find pretty easily in your charity shops. And looking here, 29, 22, 22. These are all plus posts as well, guys. Um, you can see most of the most of the clothing items do have plus for, plus post. You'll get the odd one like this that has free postage. But I honestly feel like this person here, if they had had um, $8.95 on there as postage, they would have still got that $25. I, I really do believe like with clothing, you are better off to add the postage in and you can see here people are accustomed to paying the postage there most of these sales all have postage included um the only times i i do the free postage is if it's on media books cds dvds that kind of stuff um so yeah you can see here that the plus size again here look women's plus size top 17,420 solds. Like that's huge, guys. Huge, guys. Um, I have three blazers on the Depop for $5. $5? How are you even going to make money on selling that for $5? Scottish Will, maybe you need to go back and revise those. Have you checked, like looked at your titles and looked at your photos and really gone back and revised it? Maybe it's actually too cheap. Sometimes, you know, people can look at something. If it's too cheap, they think it's crummy. Like they think it's rubbish. So maybe it's worth bumping the prices up, redoing the title, even taking a fresh photo and um, researching it. Um, I need you to do pricing for my local Vinnie's. Most things you're paying $2 for are 6 to $8 here. Reg, Vinnie's here is more expensive than Salvo's. Do you have Salvo's? I find 
Salvos is so much better for sourcing clothes because they do have the $2 rack and they do have the 50% off sale every single week. So I just find that at Salvos I do get better deals. I do have to pay up if I go to Vinnie's sometimes. And when I say pay up, I'm still looking around that $5 mark because I do try and keep my cost of goods as low as possible. And when I go to Salvos, I actually go in there with like a trolley and I pack up my trolley. My trolley is like full to the brim and I, I will go in there and I will have as many items as I can possibly grab. Whereas when I go into Vinnie's, I quite often just have what I'm carrying in my hand or I have a small hand basket. Um, I probably get more shoes at Vinnie's than I do um, Salvos. But in terms of clothes, they, they can be more expensive. So I don't know if you, if you have, ha I don't know what your salvos is like there, but I think salvos are pretty general around the, around it where they have everything for like, they have the $2 each week and they have the 50% off each week. So, you know, quite often the 50, 50% off brings it down to like $2, $53. So, um, yeah, that's a real shame if you're not getting much for $2, but there's definitely clothes out there for $2. So I don't know what state you live in. I don't know. Like it can be, you might have to look at some alternative ways to source <laughs> because, you know, when some of these items, when they are, when a lot of the bread and butter is selling for like um, $25, $30, like you don't want to be paying too much for that. Um, I mean, when you think about it, they've got their postage included. So let's say, 20 let's say 25 let's say 30 dollars to make it easy let's say we're selling something for 30 dollars and let's ignore the post because post is on top of that you roughly pay about 15 percent in ebay fees so on 30 dollars you're going to be looking at about four dollars 50 in ebay fees so that would take it down to 25.50 50 so if you have paid five dollars for that item minus the five, you're going to be making $20 off of that item. Now, don't forget that's that's just a rough of, of pricing. That's not taking in all your other business expenses. So I don't want you to think that $20 is, you know, 100% profit because you've still got other business expenses as you run your business that, you know, when at the end of the month when you've got your money coming in and your money going out, like that's all different. But as a general, when I'm trying to work out how much money I'm going to make off an item, that's the way I work it out. This item's going to cost me $2, $5, whatever. I'm going to sell it for $25, $30, and then there's postage on top of that. So if if you're charging postage on top of that, then just work it out on the, on the price that you expect it to sell for. So for me, if I buy a pair of men's shorts and I expect them to sell for $25, I'm going to roughly know that that $25 is about $4 of that is going to go in fees. So that takes it to $21. So if I'm buying those shorts for, for $2, I'm making $19 profit on that pair of shorts. If I'm paying, you know, um, $5, then I'm only making, um, what is it, $16 profit. And so you have to weigh it up. I'm still happy with $16 profit off a of bread and butter item. I think that's pretty good. So if there's if there's stuff that you can be buying for cheap and you can still be turning over like $15, $20 of profit minus your eBay fees and your postage, like that's a pretty good churn and burn model for a business. If if you want to go down the 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 bread and butter um, churn and burn, turn it all over, cheap, fast business model, like what I have. That's the kind of business model that I have. So um, again, you know, obviously it's nice to sell those items that sell for $50 plus, but it's so much more easy. It's, uh, it's easier to find all these basic brands in your charity shops that you can turn over for $25 to $35. Like they're just in so much more abundance. So that's what I focus on. And you know, that, that business model works for me. I think somebody wrote on one of my YouTube videos the other day, they left me a comment on one of my other videos where I talked about selling bread and butter. And they were like, why would you want to sell four items to make $100 when you can just sell one item to make $100? And I was like, 
because I don't find enough items in my charity store that sell for over a hundred dollars. <laughs> so for me, it's actually much faster for me to find four items that are going to sell at $25 and churn and burn them than to hunt for that item that's going to sell for over a hundred dollars. Like that, that's harder. That makes it so much harder. Like if I was, if I was to do here and um, if I was to do, where are we? If I was to go $100 here on plus size tops, okay, so I've just gone from 17 and a half thousand, what was it? 17,420 tops that have sold for over $21 plus, right? There's 17 and a half thousand that have sold. But if I tie, if I change that twenty one dollars here to a hundred dollars, there's thirty two results. There's only thirty two items out of that seventeen thousand that have sold for over a hundred dollars. So, what that says to me is, <laughs> like that's that's not bread and butter. Items over a hundred dollars are hard to. If there's only thirty of them that have sold over a hundred dollars of plus size women tops then there's no way I should be out hunting for high-end tops in my charity shop um, for in the women's plus wear range. So that's how you work it out. That's how you work it out and you think, okay, that's what I'm going to be selling. And, and you can go through and you can do this with, in, with your business. I, like I honestly encourage you to do this every couple of months. Come in here and just have a look at general what's selling and really look at the look at these amounts up here of how much of it is selling because that's how you know if something is like something that's going to churn and burn fast like if there's a lot of something sold then there's probably a lot of items listed in that category so as long as you are priced right and your photos are good and your titles are good and things like that but if there's a lot sold then it tells you that there's a lot turning over and there's a lot of people who are actively seeking that item um and, you know, this definitely, these plus size ones, they're not, I mean, how often do we find Gucci and Versace and, <laughs> you know, like we just don't find these brands in our, in our charity stops very often. I would, in fact, a lot of these items, I would actually say belong. They're not even probably resellers. They probably belong to a person who has paid this amount of money um, and, you know, they've probably worn it because they like it and, and they're selling it for themselves. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, great prices, but just so few and far but far between. So when that person's kind of said to me, Why would you why would you look for four items for $25 instead of one for a hundred? That's why. It's just not available enough. Um, so let's go back. Let's just type it out in over $50 out of interest. Women's plus size. 903 listings have sold for over $50. So you can see that if there's 17,500 that have sold between the $20 and the $50 mark, or well, there's 903 that have sold for over the $50 mark. So you have to work out in your business what you're hunting for and what's available to you. And, and then you have to you know, some people might not like selling the cheaper end of end items, but you kind of, if you're going to do this business and you want to do it full time and you need to churn over, you need to keep it coming, you need your bread and butter as constant cash, then you you actually need to look at this kind of look at this look at the stats and go, okay, so you know, 900 items isn't a huge amount that is. I mean, it's it's not bad, but 900 out of 17,000 is not not good at all. <laughs> so, you know, I know that if I'm looking for plus size women's tops, then I'm probably going to be looking to sell them between that $25, $35 mark. And, um, you know, so then it's just a matter of making sure I don't pay up. I don't want to be paying $15 really for a top that I'm going to try and sell for $25 or $35. But if I can, if I can sell it for $25, $35, then it's worth me paying between $2 and $5. So, um, yeah, let's see. Studies have shown that people are comfortable to spend $25 to $40 regularly online. Absolutely. And, and you know, my average sale is $30, so it fits in there perfectly in the middle. And that's this is, this is what I target. And, um, you know, it's definitely, 
it's definitely like I'm I'm really glad that I target it because it's the majority of what's selling and that's why that's why I churn and burn and get a lot of sales. Um if I found Versace, I'd be keeping it. <laughs> I'd, I've never found it. I found a couple of fakes. <laughs> um, Salvos here are usually about the same price as Vinnie's. Do you not have the two dollar and the five dollar? I mean, the two dollar and the half price days, or maybe your items are just more expensive to start with. There. Um, where are we? Where are we? Okay, so. Is there anything, is there anyone in the chat that wants me to look up anything specific for you and we can have a look at it here? Because um, I'm more than happy to do that. So let me here, I'm just going to go back to over the $21. Oops. Um, when I'm looking at the plus size tops here again, you can see a lot of them again are the patterns. They are... There's not as many solid colours here. We are looking at more, more of the stripes, the plaid, the, the paisleys, the florals. So, you know, for what that shows me is um, it, it would be good to really look out for the, the pattern stuff. Um, maybe the solid colours aren't, I mean, solid colours have always got their place and they'll always, they'll always be basics. But, you know, what I've been seeing here, just while I've been researching this last like 30 minutes or whatever, um, patterns, patterns seem to be going good. Now, guys, I think what I'm going to look up now is I'm going to look up Miller's because I've talked about this as a bread and butter brand before on my, um, my page and I know a lot of people skip past the brands like Miller's, Rivers, Target, like they feel like they're they're so cheap they're not worth it. So I'm just going to have a look at the Miller's tops here out of interest because um, over here in Australia our shops are full of Miller's. <laughs> so you can see here that there is 79 solds of Miller's tops over $21, which isn't huge, but it doesn't mean that it's still not. Um, I mean, I still have success with Miller's, but let's just have a look and see if we can see anything here. Miller's top size 20, Miller's top size 18. Um, this is a bundle, so about their size 18. Miller's size 20 to 22. Um, this is a vintage one, so it's going to be a little bit different. That's not Miller's. Miller's size 18, Miller's size 20. Um, Miller's size 16, Miller's size 22. So what, what I'm seeing here with the trend of Miller's is that it's all plus size. So the the... The items that have sold for over $20 in Miller's are nearly all plus size. There's a few size 12s in there, but in general, they are all oversized six, oversized 16, 16, 18, 20, 22, 22, 26, 22. So by doing this research, if you are interested in going, okay, I'm, I might try and experiment with some Miller's because it's always on the cheap rack. It's always always discount it there like it always gets to the four week mark where it's discounted um um what this is telling me is that it's the plus size in the millers that are selling for over twenty dollars so if you are going to go and experiment with maybe some of these cheaper brands like millers i would say stay away from the smaller brands because this these are selling so if I now, let me have a look. If I was to go under the $20, there are some lower end items in here. These are low, like $3 plus $9.50 postage, 99 cents. These are not good. 821 results. So when you think about that before, when, it's, when I said how many were over $20, the majority of Miller's is selling for under $20, that is telling us. So... To sell Millers, you need to be prepared as a, this is still quite a lot, just of tops alone, 821. It's not a bad amount of amount of solds. 
but it, you have to treat it as a bread and butter item. Don't buy things that are cheap like this that need a lot of ironing or that have stains on them or any, like you have to be prepared that these are your lower item bread and butter that will hopefully churn and burn and move fast, especially if you're getting the patterns. A lot of these are patterns again. Um, but really make sure there's a lot of them here sold and, you know, $10 plus post, like these are still selling, but you you just don't want to be paying much money for these. You either want to be picking them up for free off Facebook Marketplace. Um, um, I don't know about you guys with your tip. Our tip has big um, tubs of free clothes and like there's quite often millers in those tubs. I don't know if sometimes the charity shops also when they've just got too much, I don't know if they donate to your tips. I don't know if they donate to ours, but they must have to get rid of them somewhere if they have excess and they don't know where they're selling. And, yeah, our tip shop has just got cages and cages of free clothes, and you'll find these. So if you're picking these up for free and you can sell them, you know, for over $10, that's not bad, but pretty low-end items there. Let's – I'm going to go back to the $20 plus. So, yeah, just do your research – now, somebody asked me the other day if I sold Rivers and I said no because I do tend to find that Rivers is lower end. But let's have a look what Rivers is selling for now. So Rivers is, I mean, Rivers does men's and women's everything, but let's look up Rivers men's shirts. Okay, now these Rivers are not Rivers the brand. Um This is a strange title. Timberland Men's Miller's River Polo Shirt. It's got like three brands in there. That's really random. Um, okay, so let's have a look at the river, rivers. Okay, so this is a, a retro one. It's sold for pretty good money. Um, where's all the rivers? Why are they showing me new? I don't want new. Used first. What am I in? Let's go to men. Hmm. Where's all the rivers? Maybe there's none sold. <laughs> He's a new top selling for $24.95. Um there's not much, is there? You can't see much under Rivers Men's Shirt. So let's look under, uh, what else do Rivers do? Men's shoes? Okay, here's the shoes. Okay. Rivers Men's Boating Shoes. Now, they look like they're in pretty crummy condition and they've sold for $35. So that's pretty pretty good. Um, the Rivers here, $23 plus $12.50. Um, these are all brand new. We're not interested in those. Those ones say new. Why is it coming up? Show me the used first. Maybe there just isn't many. There's just not many here. So me, me, rivers, men's shorts. Okay, so remember we were looking before and the shorts are all kind of a lot of the time they're around that $25 to $30 mark. So let's see if the rivers are any different. We've got $22.50, dollars 31 50 dollars 33 um, 37 Oh, they're new, those ones. Um, 25 are new. Quite often you sometimes you do see rivers new with tags when you're when you're shopping. Patagonia, yeah. See, there's just not much. There is not much. 16 results for rivers at men's. So it's quite surprising really because when you go to the charity shops, there is a lot of rivers in there, but obviously there's a lot of resellers that are not picking it up to sell because there's not much of it listed here on eBay. Um, let's just have a look if I, instead of going to, um, if I take off the sold tier out of interest, Rivers Men's Shorts, 406 items listed for sale 
and I'm not sure, some of these are coming up, they're not even shorts, they're coming up as shirts, but you can see that there is 400-ish items. It's hard to tell because they're not all, even though I've typed in shorts here, shirts are coming up. So, um, strange, there's just not that much. So, Anyway, there you go. It's worth doing your research because, you know, there's probably a reason why we don't pick up rivers in the shops. There's not a huge amount sold. Um, it, there's nothing to say that it won't sell. I mean, rivers is actually quite when, – sometimes when you're in the charity shop and you go past rivers, it actually reminds me of R.M. Williams and some of the stuff actually feels really nice quality. I wouldn't totally rule it out in, in selling it, but you need to be prepared to sell it for cheap, I think. Like you're not going to, you know, you're not going to get um, Tweed River $33. I would think that's a little bit little bit high. If they aimed around that $25 mark, probably going to have more luck. So, yeah, I would probably, like, I've never really bought Rivers and I think there's probably a reason why. <laughs> <laughs> let's look up men's jeans out of interest what's selling on the men's jeans i want the comps I want it over 20 dollars. let's have a look just check if, if there's any questions here <laughs> um in the u.s target sells great i rarely hold on to target items for more than a month or two especially their newer lines like knox rose wild fable universal thread so nicolette i actually find target sells really well for me as well and especially the women's corporate um dresses and skirts and blouses and blazers and they're actually not that cheap to buy new so i actually really think that um oh after I've just done this, the looked at the jeans, I'm going to come on there and I'm going to look at Target and I'm going to show you. Katie's and Rockman's, let's have a look at them. Looking up jeans here. Jonathan, I'm looking up jeans. Um, yes, Anki, I find that Target sells quite well. Let's have a look at Target um, after I've done this. How do you value something that's rare and you cannot find it on eBay? What research would you do? If that was me, I would go onto Google and I would try and get some information about it there. I would try and get some information about the brand, um, you know, the year, trying to find out if it was something that was exclusive or rare. Why is it so hard to find? Um, I think I would try and gather information from Google and then kind of piece it together. And it might even be worth reaching out to somebody who's knowledgeable in that. Like if I was to find a really rare band T-shirt, for instance, I that's not something I sell all the time. I'm not into vintage T-shirts. I'm not... Um, I don't find them readily. Um, I don't hunt them down in, in wholesale lots or anything like that. So if I found like a really rare vintage band T-shirt, I would actually seek help from that from somebody I know that's knowledgeable on that. So there's lots of people in this community who I know are knowledgeable on vintage rare T-shirts like Retro Rescuers, um, even Rally Roots in America. These type of people are, are really kind. And if you sent them an, a, a text message, I'm pretty sure, sorry if I bombard you guys <laughs> with messages. Um, no, but I, I really think that if I sent someone like that a message and said, hey, you know, I bought this T-shirt. I know it's rare, but I, I don't really know anything about it. Can you give me a Can you give me a hand? I'm pretty sure somebody like that, they know roughly what it's worth off the top of their head. So I think look out if it's something that you know there's other resellers who are knowledgeable about, knowledgeable about it, don't be afraid to ask um, because most of these resellers around are actually really kind and helpful and there's so many resellers that I've reached out to um, thinking, you know, like even in America, big resellers, and I've reached out and, you know, asked them things and like, because of that, have become friends with these people and now can message them about anything at any time. So um, don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help. Um, you know, if you do find something rare, there there's some people around with amazing knowledge, you know, on different subjects. So um, no half price at our salvers. Oh, you need to you need to travel into state. <laughs> you need to travel into state. Okay, where are we? Hey, Bron, how are you going? 
Um, <laughs> Bron and Rod are outsourcing together today. I'm so jealous. Hey, Tom. Um, hey, Vinegar Jar, Peter. And who else is here that I've missed? Joanna's here. I think I saw Harry in here. Hey, Harry and Meredy. Um, so I'm just going to have a quick look here at jeans and see what we're selling. So I did a search for men's jeans, just a basic jeans shirt, so we can just have a look at the different styles and colours and stuff that are selling. And I did it. I priced them for over twenty one dollars, just to see what comes up. And you can see there is forty eight thousand three hundred and seventy nine pairs of sold jeans, which is just crazy. So it just goes to show when you look at something like that, you go, okay. Jeans are a hot seller. And we all know, I mean, jeans are, a, you wear them all year round. They're, you know, they are, everybody has jeans in their cupboard, don't they? Like, they're just one of those things that's going to be a consistent seller. So to get, to get the, to get the jean sales, you know, a lot of people end up, I, I know I have a couple of pairs of jeans here that I just love the same jeans. So I would particularly look up that that specific brand, that specific style and size, and I would happily buy them online. And I think a lot of people do that with jeans. But just, let's have a look here at the pricing. Now, this brand here, I can never say it, Kazubi, Zubi, or I don't know how they say it, but it's it does sell quite well, this brand. Not a brand that I find every day, so I wouldn't class it as bread and butter, um, but it is definitely a brand to look out for. And G-Star. So G-Star, I mean, a lot of people always say G-Star G -Star are like the, um, you know, like like a real bowler almost. Look out for G-Star. They, they bring you so much money. But when you look at it this here, $25, these G-Star, $35, like that's really not bringing you any more money than what we just saw before for a Just Jeans top. <laughs> so don't get caught up with having to find these expensive brands like G-Star because um, that G-Star is not selling for any more than a pair of Johnny Big shorts <laughs> or a pair of Billabong shorts or, you know, a pair of, um, you know, uh, what was it? What was what did we look at before? Just basic more brands. What did uh, what was the, uh, I can't even think what the basic more brand we were looking at before was. Uh, just jeans you know like there was just jean tops there for $25 so you probably when you think about it you can probably get the just jeans top on your on a $2 rack but you can't you're not very often going to find the g-star on the $2 rack because as soon as the g-star hits the um the rack it's snavelled up people take it straight away and they'll pay for it they'll pay 10 15 dollars for a pair of g-star so if I was to pay $15 for this pair of G-Star and only sell it for $25, that's not a real good sale. <laughs> that wasn't really worth my $15, you know, like in $12, $15. If you're buying jeans for like $12 to $15, you want to be selling them like this for $50 plus post. Um, a lot. I find that I can get a lot of jeans for around $7. Um so, you know, I'm happy to spend $7 on a pair of jeans if I know it's going to sell for like $40 plus. But again, like I'm still, my majority of my sales are in that $30 mark. So I really don't want to be spending too much if I'm only selling for $30. Um, so there seems, you know, jeans, there's always going to be a mixture. I don't think it's a one size kind of fits all for jeans. People like black jeans, they like blue jeans, they like holy jeans, ripped jeans. Some people like skinny jeans, bootleg. <laughs> you know, there's, you know, this is a tapered leg. Um, when it kind of looks bowed like that, that's called a tapered leg. There's different, there's so many different styles of jeans. And I think there's people, you know, people for all different types of jeans. This is pretty good. These G-Stars have sold for $50. They are tapered. I do find the tapered ones sell quite well. Um, where are we with jeans? If there's, Whoever asked for jeans in the thing, um, just let me know if there was something specific that you wanted me to look up with the jeans. G-Star depends on the style. I've sold several for $80 or $100 or so. Yeah, you, sometimes you can get good money, but I think you have to be prepared sometimes that if there's too much competition for them, 
you'll end up having to reduce them a little bit. Um, okay, so here's some RM Williams. So the moleskin, the vintage moleskin, that always sells, um, you know, well as well, 35 plus post. Um, and you can see that a lot of these brands, they're all very similar. Lee, Levi, Wrangler, Nudie, G-Star, RM Williams, um, Diesel. We're not seeing so much of the, the regular cheaper cheaper kind of brands here. We are seeing quite branded branded jeans here because you can get like those Kirkland ones and stuff there. You know, that's uh, maybe I'll look up Kirkland because I see Kirkland jeans in the um, charity stops all the time and I, I know that they're cheap and I just, again, I look, I do, I have to say I do look past them because I know they're cheap. Let's see if my my theory is right. <laughs> okay, there's a look at this. Three three sales for Kirkland men's jeans. <laughs> so there's a reason why I don't pick up Kirkland men's jeans. <laughs> Stay away from Kirkland, guys. Um, let's just go back here, page two. Um, Levi's 503s. Now, you can actually do some study on selling Levi's. If you go into Google, you can actually look up the top um, style of jeans that, that sells. So 501 is the top style of Levi's that sells, but it will give you a whole list of the like the top 10 styles of Levi's. So that can be quite good as well. If you just keep that list in your phone, when you do find um, Levi's, because you do come across them all the time and they are always like the different number, but you can look it up and it might say, okay, well, 503 might be the, the third most popular jeans. So that might be a really good one to buy because you know it's going to be a, a popular style. Um, we can see here that all the RM Je Williams jeans are selling for quite a lot of money, um, $50, $60. You know, there's definitely money to be made in jeans. $29. Um, this is this title makes me it's too it's too busy. <laughs> so all the capitals, the the hot, the must have, like I'm not a fan of that title. Um Bell bottoms, I think bell bottoms are always going to sell well. People like that vintage bell bottomy kind of look. Diesel. Um, again, RM Williams, they're selling well. Wrangler, Wrangler sells quite well for me as well. I like selling Wrangler and I do pick it up if it's cheap enough. Riders is another one that I pick up. Mm, vintage Lee. So, you know, there's quite, let's do a bit more of a, let's just do a little bit more of a narrow it down with jeans just because there's so much of it. So let's look at how, so there was 48,000 pairs of men's jeans listed that had sold for over $20. So if we were to do this as $20 to $40, we've now narrowed it down to 24,500. So we've kind of halved it. So it means that half of those pairs of jeans are selling between $20 and $40. So if we were to do jeans over $60 and have I got pre-owned pre-owned $60 yep that takes us now down to 1,753 solds so out of the 48,000 pairs of jeans that have sold for over $20, $20 only 1,700 of them have sold for over $60. So I think it's good to look at the stats like this because it helps you when you go into the sh shops to kind of know what to expect. Like should should I be aiming, How uh, are the majority of the jeans I'm going to buy in the charity shop, are they going to sell for over $60 or are the majority of the jeans I'm going to sell, I uh, need to be selling more around that $40 mark? And you can see that with $1,700, whereas if, if you target that, you know, um, forty dollars. Let's target thirty-five to forty dollars in jeans. Eighteen hundred pairs of jeans in that with that five-dollar difference. So thirty-five to forty dollars. So 
it's it's interesting to th it's interesting to see let's just go here twenty dollars to forty dollars four thousand six hundred and ninety two listings have sold so i i i think that you've got to new tags new pre-owned I don't know, like jeans are a hard one. They're just so, they're in abundance. There's so many of them. I think that sometimes I have jeans listed for higher price and then I end up reducing them down to around this $30, $40 mark. Um, and sometimes I'm actually surprised because I'll sit there and think, damn, that was a really good brand. I thought I was going to get $40 plus for that and then I don't. So, but I think it's just that there's such an abundance of them. There's so much competition. Even if we were to go um, out of the solds, what have I got on here to change my $20 and over? So it uh, must be because now I've got ticked this pre-owned. So there's 27,000 pairs of men's jeans that are listed for over $20 for sale. So it's, there's a lot of competition out there. Do you know, like 27,000 pairs of jeans. So you've got to really make sure if you if you think about it, 27,000 pairs of jeans, how's your listing going to stand out? How are you going to get your listing up the top? How are you going to, how is your listing going to stand out with 27,500 other people selling jeans? You have to be specific with what, you, what you, you're saying. G-Star Jeans 28, um, I just don't think that that's a great, great title. Like, at like, this is obviously five minutes left. It's obviously gone past its 30 days. They haven't sold. Um, whether or not they've clicked over another 30 days, another 30 days, I don't know. But this listing is about to end, so it means it's probably, you know, it's, it's at least been on for 30 days. I think if this person changed their title, um, you know, that could just give it such a boost. Like there must be a style number on these jeans. There's no indication in the title of the length of jeans. Now, this one's much better. It says size 34, 32 waist 34. So, you know, I think it's very important. Most people know the length of jeans that they need. Like, you know, most of you men will know that you need a 34 length. So you don't want to be clicking on hundreds of pairs of jeans and they're all like 30s or 32s, which are way too short for you. You need you need to have those informations in your title. Um, where are we? Um, would you buy branded jeans? but it has some damage such as loose threads on the back pockets or they appear to be altered or shortened. I would buy them if they were the right price as long as I'm not overpaying for it because there's actually a lot of people like that um, quite worn-in look on a pair of jeans and they like um, distressed jeans or uh, like a, that's quite a style almost. So I wouldn't rule that out as being a fault as such but I would definitely make sure that I showed close-up photos and you know, made sure I put all that inside the listing. Um, um, I sometimes, unless they're, oh, this is your, he's referring to you as well. I sometimes do, if they are, sh if they are shortened a huge amount, I usually sell them for a bit cheaper. Yeah, I think with shortening them, it can definitely be an issue with pants, especially if they've been cut to be shortened. So I steer clear now and don't buy jeans and pants that have actually been cut and then shortened because you are really narrowing down your your buyer. Whereas like if a pants is too long, like a lot of people who are short people are used to having to hem their jeans up or their pants up. Like it's just part of, it just becomes, I've got a girlfriend, every single pair of short pants and jeans that she buys, she has to immediately take to the tailor because she cannot buy jeans that are for her, how short she is. <laughs> so she buys jeans that would fit me, who's five foot seven, whereas she's like five foot two. So, you know, she has to take these jeans in and get them altered. Um, so she's fine because she's buying them brand new and having them altered for herself. She probably doesn't care if they've been cut. But in terms of reselling them, it makes a big difference. It's harder to sell a pair of pants that have been cut and shortened. 
So I don't know if you guys saw on my little Instagram the other day, I actually had a little video up of I actually carry like a mini tape measure in my handbag. And when I go into the charity shops, I measure the inseam of the leg if I think it's been shortened. Um, generally, I can know just by holding them up against my waist, especially with men's, I can kind of hold them up and I know the length and I can tell by going off me. Um, but if I'm if I query it at all, I pull that little tape measure out in the store and I measure the inseam. And if it's too short, I leave them on. I leave them on the rack. I'm not. I'm not buying them anymore if they're too short. There's been too many pairs of pants that I've lost money on because they've been too short or they've been shortened or cut, and they just don't. They just take much longer to sell. And because I'm trying to build this churn and burn quick flip type model, I don't want the jeans that are going to sit in my store for a long time. I want. I want to get them moving. Um, hey, Pat. Um, where are we? I see a lot of street brand jeans and trader brand jeans. Um, let me see. Now, let's go back. Somebody was saying before, let's go to look at Target. So let's just go out of here. Let's go into Target um, women's clothing. And I'm going to go back down to the solds. And where are we on price? So I'm, I've got my price set to over twenty dollars. I really want to see what's selling for over twenty dollars. So there's eleven hundred and forty six items that have sold here in Target um, for over twenty dollars, which is pretty good. Um, let's go Target Women's. Let's make it a bit more specific. Let's go a skirt because. 78 listings for skirts that have sold. And out of interest, how many skirts are listed? 432 have are listed currently and 72 have sold. So that's like one in six, isn't it, that is selling, which is not bad. But let's just have a look at these prices and let's have a look at any styles that we might see if we can notice any trends with. So here we go. We've got like an a liney kind of skirt, long floral skirt, vintage. So look, you can see here the vintage Target skirt has sold for good money, $40 plus $8.95 post. Now this is a brand that is made for Target. So quite often those they're like the, they're made by designers, but they're like a cheaper version of their designer. <laughs> so they actually do quite well. Um, those kind of those kind of more boutiquey brands for Target. Target long maxi skirt here, um, vibrant blue pencil skirt. I find the pencil skirts do well for me. These is another like straight pencil skirts. I find them they do well for corporate wear and. $29 here. So they've taken an offer on that, but they've probably taken that offer for around $25. So that's pretty good for just a plain size 10 navy spotted pencil skirt. Um, Preview is another brand of um, Target skirt, Target, like another in brand, and they do a lot of corporate wear. I actually like wearing Preview myself. They have some nice stuff. So $25. So in Target, if you were to go and buy that brand new, I don't know what that would be, maybe $40, $45. So that, to get $25 for it secondhand is actually pretty good. So you kind of see there's been quite a few longer skirts that have been selling and quite a few pencil skirts. There's only really been this one that's been more A-lined. The rest have all been either long, pencil. This is a Danny Minogue for Target. Now, Danny Minogue is a petite, so she is for the, you know, short, little, tiny, minute women. <laughs> um, this is like, it's a pretty skirt, pleated, A-line, but it's still, it, again, it's a little bit longer, so some more longer ones here. This is another vintage one. Um, so you can see there's quite a mixture. I wouldn't say there's anything specific jumping out at me at um color wise or um you know pattern wise it seems to be quite a mixture it's going between 
lots of different styles but none if you notice that there's not many mini skirts that are selling so mini skirts might not be really in fashion at the moment we might be more looking for these skirts that are knee length full length and um corporate like the the pencil kind of ones let's have a look if i just search up here pencil Let's see, pencil skirts. What if we typed up denim? Not a huge amount of them selling. Target women's dress. 334 women's dresses have sold with Target. So that's pretty good. And that's selling for over $20. So that you that's pretty good for bread and butter. You know, you can pick Target up a lot. At, you know, you see Target all the time. So if this this is showing pretty good. 330 for just the women's dresses. I, I think that's I think that's pretty good. That would show to me to, you know, it's worth selling. I recognise this girl from Instagram, <laughs> that backdrop. Um, oh, this one's pretty good, 75 bucks. I don't know what made that one pretty special. Target tree-coloured sleeveless maxi dress. Let's have a look. Oh, error. <laughs> it's telling me not to look. Um so this one was run on a 20% off sale, was 30, so for 24, like that's that's a good corporate style sleeveless. Somebody will wear that with a little blazer. Um, so I would think that black dresses like this would be like something good to look for because they are a corporate style and I think corporate is, um, and you can see here she's put corporate and career into her titles, which is very smart because that's exactly how I would describe that as well as a corporate dress. Um, so I think it's really smart to put those those into your um, into your titles. Um, I was going to say that dress looks like a dressing gown, but it is. I don't know why it's in under dresses, but you can see here that this is a Target dressing gown and it's sold for forty two dollars. So. Who would have thought? Who, maybe maybe we need to be searching for the um, dressing gowns. I've seen this seller a lot now. There's been three just scrolling down on her main page. So she's obviously, again, she's got great titles, photos are clear, and um, she's describing these items very well. Um, so, yeah, I think you can see here dresses. There's quite a lot of dresses, target dresses. There seems to be a mixture between corporate and party dresses and summer dresses. And I would definitely say that target dresses are something that you should be looking out for if you're doing women's clothes. Um, oh, Pat, <laughs> thank you so much. You didn't have to do that. <laughs> thank you. That's really kind, Pat. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> you having Maccas? Sp Rod's probably eating a spicy chicken brand. Um, where are we? Hello, Sherry. Recent, a new subscriber from West Virginia, USA. I caught this in time. Recent subscriber. Thank you for your content. Thank you for joining me and coming over. This is a bit of a random pop-up stream. I really just wanted to do some source, um, some researching myself. Just I like to research every couple of months and see, you know, what's selling and try and stay up to date with trends or, or things that I spot or, or patterns. So I just thought I'd come on live and do it today and um, see if it helped anybody else. <laughs> but thank you for thank you for coming over. Um, so, yeah, oh, that's so nice. Um, so, yeah, so, guys, I don't know. What else were we going to look up? What else did somebody say? Rockman's. I don't really pick up much Rockman's. Three hundred. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Three hundred and thirty-nine results for women's Rockman's tops have sold for over twenty dollars. Okay, see, this is a surprise to me. I don't pick up much Rockman's. I see it all the time on the two-dollar rack, and 
this has pricked my ears up now whoever suggested I look up Rockman's <laughs> and see if I hadn't have sat down and gone okay let's do let's do this let's have a look at these different brands um, I probably would have kept skipping over Rockman's so I actually think that's quite good just for tops 339 so let's try and have a look here what are the I'm gonna have what are the trends? I'm going to have some Coke. Hold on. Let's see if we can spot out. Is there something particular? Like, let's have a look here. Are these selling a lot of plus size again? Um, is it the colours? Is it is it um, solid colours? Is it patterns? Um, so, again, we've got size 20 here. Size 12, jumper. Marley Cotton Blend Jumper, oversized look, okay. Um, great sale, 35 plus post. Rockman's Top, um, size 14 here, size 10 to 12. They're not even, it was a size medium. Size 18 plus size, plus size, size 12, 12. Katie's and Rockman's um, Bundle here. Um, it's really hard with clothes to show, isn't it? Like it's hard to see those three tops here. You can kind of see their patterny tops, but you can't see the style. And I'm, I'm presuming when you go into the listing, it's going to show the different, different styles. It is hard to kind of, um, when you do a multi listing, I think with clothes to show the different, unless they're all exactly the same, um, extra large, extra large so again more looking into the plus size i can't say i can't say i see a huge like there is a lot of plus size here but there's also quite a lot of small mediums um so with rockman's here as i'm looking i'm not really seeing any particular trend that stands out to me i am seeing a few that have cold shoulder which is this gap in the shoulder so maybe that's quite a trend that that this particular brand um maybe makes a lot of a lot of that style i saw that again that multi-listing said cold shoulder um but i guess what i am noticing here again lots of patterny kind of tops um they're a little bit more dull when i look here there's nothing except for this orange there's not a huge amount that seems to be like they're almost darker aren't they they're not really like the pastely soft pinks they're kind of more vibrant darker patterny kind of blacks and they're not they're not that kind of millers is more of a soft pink like baby colors baby pinks and blues and greens and they're more more millers almost looks more coastal i would say and rockman's which which i would kind of put as similar to millers um, it seems more heavier and darker just looking at these things. Like the 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 patterns don't seem as soft. They don't seem as um, gentle. Is, does that make sense? <laughs> so that would be my takeaway from researching Rockman's. I would definitely say it's worth 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 picking Rockman's up. Um, looking at this for for women's tops for bread and butter items. If I can pick them up for cheap, like two dollars. Um, dip, like there seems to be quite a variety here selling I would probably look for the ones that are in that heavier darker style kind of patterns rather than those softer prettier ones which I think Miller's is more what do you guys think um Rockman's and Katie's with me I don't buy them but I too see a lot at two dollars I might look at them more clearly now yeah Meredy like this is quite surprising actually what else Rockman's actually sell quite a lot of um three-quarter kind of pants don't they or just pants in general let's have a look oh, 93 sold not huge but um still selling for around that $30 plus post 20 25 not bad for bread and butter um and again see how they're all darker they're all these kind of darker blacks browns navies so that would be my takeaway from rockman's it's not a real it's not a real fresh look it's it's more darker but there's definitely quite a bit of sales here and um 
Rockman's Women's. What else do they sell? They've got um, shirts. That's probably different. I looked up tops before, but shirts is probably a little bit different. I mean, this is not much here. Look, this is a bulk lot of 10 for only selling for $20 plus post. So, you know, they haven't made any money there. This might be somebody who's trying to clear. You can see they've got a um, W338 here. So for me, that's a, that's a skew. Um, so this would, to me, I can see this is probably a reseller. This is probably dead stock and they're just trying to move it as a bundle. Um, and, you know, possibly another reseller might buy that take fresh photos, redo the titles, and they might sell it. Um, so, you know, that that this this is showing a way to actually source perhaps, you know, because if a lot of these items are selling for $20 each individually, so this person is selling like a bulk lot um, and maybe, maybe you can take, you could buy something like this, take better photos, make a better title, and you might, you might be able to sell it. It might be a way to source if you go into lockdown or something. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't rule out Rockman's. Let's look at Katie's. Two hundred nine for Katie's tops. Two hundred nine solds. So again, that and this is looking at over twenty dollar items. Um, not bad. Again, with Katie's, it's those darker colours, isn't it? They're not so pastely and pretty looking. They're kind of heavy looking. There's a pink top. That's vintage, but, you know, so maybe the current stuff isn't as pink. And there's a couple of pinks. But I do, again, I do feel like it's quite heavy looking, heavy looking colours. Vintage. So the vintage Katie's in the pink seem to be selling there quite nicely. $35 vintage again. So vintage Katie, I've, I've picked that out three times, the word vintage, um, just by scrolling this first page. So, you know, vintage Katie's might be a bit of a hot. Let's look up vintage Katie's. Hundred and twenty results for vintage, um, and let's have a look at these prices: forty-five plus post, twenty-one plus post, um, 40, 44, 20, 30, 28, 29. So the vintage stuff, like there's a few items here that are bringing in like the bigger dollars on the vintage, but a lot of the vintage stuff is really just bringing in the same pricing around that twenty-five to thirty-five dollar mark. Um, so yeah, where are we? If a seller is sent an offer and a buyer accepts, they don't show as a strike through in the old sold price. So that might skew the pricing that's showing. If a seller is sent an offer and the buyer accepts, they don't show as a strike. Okay, I see what you're saying, Liz. So you're saying that the only time when it's like this, um, showing as a skew is maybe when the person has made an offer, not when the buyer has sent an offer. I don't know about that. That's something I'm not sure about, to be honest. Um, I'm not. Sh I'm not a hundred percent sure if I. I. I didn't know that. If that's true, but I think you know. At the end of the day, even if that's true, this is the only kind of stuff that we have to go on to research, isn't it? Like to do our research, we have to look up the sold comps, and even if they've sold for a little bit less, because of a um, an offer, we've still got to go off these rough rough prices that you know they are. So, um, you know, the, it's really the only way to research, isn't it? But I, I definitely think it's important to come in and do this research, and and it's, it don't get caught up with only researching. Um, where are we? Let me put me back on the big screen for a minute. I think we just, as resellers, we need to make sure we don't get caught up with only reselling the items that we're looking at in store. Like, oh, yeah, this looks good. I'm going to comp it. We need to really go back to basics. 
we need to be continuously learning and we need to um, be co constantly keeping on top of the current trends. And I think it's really good every now and then just to come and spend a couple of hours and look up the different types of items you sell, like jeans, shirts, tops, skirts, pants, whatever it might be, and just have a rough look at how many is selling, how many are listed, what's the sell-through rate, how many, you know, you know that you're going to earn roughly around that, you know, $30 average, really, 20, 20, 20, you want to be selling for over that $20 mark, you know, 20 to $40, let's say. So you want to have an idea of how many of those items are actually selling, not just that we think are selling, but how many are actually selling, and then go in there and, and start looking at it. And, and, you know, you might end up finding that there's just as many Rockman's tops that are selling as there are witchery so let's out of here so what did we we did rockman's women's tops out of interest so there was 341 solds for rockman's women tops and if we go to witchery women's tops which is a much higher end brand but still a mall brand 2666 so 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, it's about 10 times, isn't it? It's about 10 times the amount. So there's 10 times more witchery selling than Rockman's. Um, so I think it's good to it's good to be aware of that kind of information. Look it up and get used to that. So yes, Rockman sells, but witchery is going to sell 10 times more. So if you can buy a Rockman's top and a witchery top at $5 each, you're better off to go with the witchery top because it's, it's going to have a higher sell-through rate and hopefully even sell for that higher end dollars. But if you're selling bread and butter like me, you don't always – oh, I didn't even have that on the screen, did I? Oh, here. Ah, add to stream. Sorry, yeah. So what I was saying is, is see, see here, 2,665 women's tops of witchery sold compared to 300 and something of – Rockman's so yeah I just think I, I we need to we need to know this kind of stuff we need to be aware of it we need to know the brands that are selling 10 times more than the other brands and it doesn't mean we rule out the other brands because they're still selling like for Rockman's to top to be still selling like 300 items of it so it's still going to sell so those are the items that we can try and pick up on the bargain racks you know the bargain bins the filler bags you know they're the type of maybe items like yeah you go out to the charity shop and you are you're, you're trying to search for those higher end mall brands because they're going to be accessible to you not like gucci and stuff so you're looking for the higher end mall brands you don't want to rule out the lower end mall brands because you they still sell. They might not sell as much. They still sell, but it's knowing them what sells. So I, I would know now just after today, if I was going to go in there and look for Millers, I'm looking for more plus sized and I'm looking for more softer, pastely, florally kind of patterns. And if I'm going in there for Rockman's, if I'm seeing Rockman's, I'm looking again at quite a mixture of sizes. I'm more open to buying smaller sizes, but I'm looking for like more darker, heavier kind of prints that don't look as pretty almost. So, um, you know, now when I go out sourcing, that's in my head and I can I can take that into account. I can look at it and, and make judgment calls. And even if an item is only $2, you still want to only spend $2 on an item that, it's still $2. <laughs> it might only be $2, but it's still $2. It's still your money. It's still an investment going into your business. And it's still money that you want to spend wisely. So, you know, knowing these kind of trends and knowing what's popular when you go out there is going to help you to spend that money wisely. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Liz. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I didn't know that, Liz. You, you're always a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> um, a friend of mine only sells Suzanne's and she makes great dollars. I think she gets loads of multi-orders to make the, the money. Okay, Joanna, now that's interesting when you say that because you say your friend, she only sells Suzanne. So that's a niche and that's actually quite clever because then what happens is people who do like the brand Suzanne, they'll come back to you, they'll save her store because they know that she only sells Suzanne. So she's going to get repeat buyers, 
buyers who particularly like the way that that brand fits on them and the style and they know the sizing, you know, you, you tend to get like that, don't you? Like I like the brand for me, Dick Dubra, which I can never even say. <laughs> But, you know, like I know my size in that. I like their style. It's very monochrome. It's very black, white, grey denim, you know, because that's kind of what I like. And um, you get familiar with that. So this this friend is actually quite clever. If she's only selling Suzanne, I think it's clever to have niches. And how easy is that when she's flipping through the racks if she only wants Suzanne and how easy is that if she wants to put a call out on Facebook and say, hey, I really love Suzanne. Does anyone have any Suzanne clothes that they could give me? She might all of a sudden get free stock coming towards her. If people are clearing out their closet, they're also going to feel like, well, Suzanne, it's not really expensive. It's the type of clothes I would just give to the charity shop. Whereas witchery, a lot of people will go on on Facebook and they'll try and sell it because they know they've paid a lot of money for it to start with and they want to make money back on it. So whereas those cheaper brands, people are more like, yeah, I just want to get rid of it. So it's actually quite smart. I actually, I actually find that interesting. And, um, I, yeah, I find that kind of knowledge interesting. Um where are we? Let's go back in. Um, let me see if there's any questions. Um, yeah, Meredy. Oh, Rockman's I leave behind all the time. I'm guessing the plus size and good fabrics. Yeah, well, Joanna, like we just saw, like the Rockman's seem to be a mixture of, of sizing. Miller's is more the more the, the plus sizing, but it's definitely interesting. And I would encourage you guys to all do a little bit more research like this yourself. Um, just go and spend like an hour or two and sit down at the computer and dedicate it to researching because the way that you grow in business is to research and learn. You have to be constantly learning and I just, it's really important to, to stay on top of trends and markets that are changing and, and, and remember what sold for you last summer might not sell for you this, this summer. And, you know, last summer solid colors might've been really hot sellers and now it's going to be florals. So you, you need to kind of stay on top and just constantly be looking at the recent solds and, it really doesn't take long, you know. This is this will be of taking me longer because I'm talking through it and 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 things like that. But like I I try and do it like quite regularly, and I'll just come on for like an hour and have a look at what's selling. And if I'm trying to learn about something like a new market, that I'm like if I was trying to learn about um, electricals, which I don't do electricals, <laughs> but if I was trying to do electricals, I wouldn't just start off by going straight into the stores and buying like a heap of electrical stuff, um, even if I was comping it in there, I'd want to have a bit of an idea. So I'd want to do a bit of a study like this on my own and look up all different types of electric, electro, electronic items so that I had more of an idea and really understood what parts of them were selling and you know how much like which which ones are selling 10 times more than the, like is, is the brand boss Bosch selling for more than Sony, you know, like I'd, I'd want to study all those anal an analytics. <laughs> I'd like to analyse it all. I like to analyse it all. Um, um, she's a part-time seller, your friend, so it works works for her. Yeah, so if you're part-time, how easy is that to specialise in one thing like that? I think that's fantastic. Like... She's, she's probably missing out on heaps on the racks by going through, but she's also simplifying her process because she knows probably that Suzanne, she's not looking at the men's stuff, she's not looking at the kids' stuff. She knows that Suzanne's probably in her in the, the tops and the blouses mainly. It's in the, the pants, like the, the linen-y look kind of cotton pants, um, skirts, dresses. They're, they're the only racks she probably has to go through. And if she's only looking for Suzanne... She's also becoming very familiar herself with the colours that are selling well for her, the size. I bet she knows what sizes sell better for her. And she, like, straight away she'll be like, yes, size 18, I'm going to pick that up straight away. So it's it's very smart, actually, I think, to do a niche like that. Um, I don't find it very much either, Meredy. Not, not really. I buy most of mine new. <laughs> um, I do love that brand, but it is an awesome brand. Um, yeah, really interesting, Joanna. That's like really, really interesting and, and good on her. Like 
I love hearing stories like that. That's awesome. Righto, well, I might end this up here. What if I've been going for longer than I thought I would? I thought I'd just pop on here for like 45 minutes, an hour, and just do a little bit of comping. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes I think it's good to do this together as well because there was brands there that I wouldn't have Rockman's. Like it wasn't on my radar to specifically look up Rockman's. But, you know, it is a good – one thing would be good actually is if you actually – but to write down some of these brands that you see all the time because when you sit down to comp, you don't always have them at forefront of your mind. But, you know, if you have a little list going in your phone, um, Rockman's, Katie, Suzanne, Johnny Big, like these different brands that you haven't really dabbled in much and you tend to skip over a lot, just start making note of them in your phone and then just come and spend a couple of hours and do some do some research and then compare it to the other brands like I just did there with Rockman's comparing it to Witchery so we can know that like Witchery selling 10 times more but it doesn't mean the other one's something that you rule out and you only look for Witchery because you're probably going to find more Rockman's in store than Witchery and you're probably going to find more Rockman's for $2 than Witchery at you might have to pay five seven dollars for so um yeah it's all very interesting isn't it and it's all just part of the ebay game and learning all this stuff just will help your business grow like you know it makes your sourcing faster when you go out your sourcing is faster you know what to look for um you know it's, everything about it just just helps do fakes worry you 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 know like i most of the items that are faked are the really more higher-end brands. So obviously we all know that Levi's are faked. I am pretty cluey at knowing what to look for on, a, on Levi's. Um, there's, a lot, there's a lot of jean brands that get faked and a lot of those really expensive designer brands will get faked. Like you see fake Yeezys in the, like the shoes, fake Yeezys all the time, fake um, Gucci bags, <laughs> things like that. Um you, you can't, I don't really worry about the fakes. I don't think, um, I know they're around, I'm specific and, you know, the fakes are on those higher end brands. So you've just got to be a little bit more careful when you're sourcing basic bread and butter brands like me, they're not really faked. So it's not really an issue for me. I'd say it would be more of an issue for people who, um, sell more higher, higher end stuff than me, like people who have smaller stores and they specialize in, higher end items then they probably need to be more aware of it for me who's like that churn and burn sausage factory who just wants to get all the cheap stuff and sell it off for 30 dollars <laughs> churn it over bring bring me all the 30 dollar things um so yeah anyway i think i will head off i it's time for lunch and i have got a heap of photos to do and a huge amount of shipping <laughs> so I'm off, guys, and thanks for thanks for checking in. That was fun. I really enjoyed that little pop-up live. I might do another one of these, you know, every now and then, and we'll just, you know, gives us all a reminder. If we do one of these every couple of months, it just gives us all a reminder to pull back. And, you know, obviously in your – if you're, there's a few UK people here. If you're in the UK, um, you know, your brands are going to be different to me. And this is more about showing you kind of like – how to go about it and I guess, you know, and, and just as a reminder to, to go do it yourself as well, you, you can do exactly the same as what I just did. You just need to look at it at the brands that are more particular to you. So you can kind of take this knowledge and apply it to wherever you are, you know, in the world. And, you know, I'm sure most of you all know how to comp and, and, and look up completed sales and all that kind of stuff, but it's just a reminder to make sure you're not just checking completed sales for items that you're specifically looking at buying you need to be checking comps on what's selling trends seasons and definitely you know doing it on a fairly regular basis so that you can stay on top and keep growing and finding new brands that surprise you and that then you look out for and you can make money on that's the idea so yeah thank you very much um thanks guys for coming and have a good day